Hello, and welcome to Serverless 101. My name is Eric Johnson, and I'm a principal developer advocate for Serverless at AWS. Serverless 101 is a video series to help you get acquainted with the AWS services that are serverless. In this video, I cover Amazon S3. We'll talk about what it does and when you should use it. Let's get started. Amazon Simple Storage Service, Amazon S3, is an object storage service that offers industry-leading scalability, data availability, security, and performance. This means customers of all sizes and industries can use it to store and protect any amount of data for a range of use cases such as data lakes, websites, cloud-native applications, backups, archives, machine learning, and analytics. Amazon S3 is designed for 99.9999 and so on, 11 nines of durability, and stores data for millions of customers all around the world. This paragraph is straight from the Amazon S3 website and does a great job of explaining the power of serverless storage. However, I want to take this a bit further and explain why Amazon S3 is a perfect solution for storage when building event-driven applications on top of serverless. First of all, S3 itself is serverless. In fact, it was one of the first serverless services in existence. When using Amazon S3 for storage, you do not have to have a host machine. You are not responsible for provisioning blocks of hard drive space in case you might use it. Instead, S3 provides virtually limitless space to store objects, and the only thing you pay for is the actual storage you are using. Second of all, Amazon S3 generates events. When we are building event-driven applications, any service that emits an event is useful to us. In the case of Amazon S3, anytime a file is created, modified, or deleted, S3 can emit an event. Let's look at an example to see if we can make this clear. Let's say I have video files that need to be analyzed for sensitive data. I could upload this to a server somewhere and process the file synchronously in memory. However, I would need to have a fleet of servers to make sure it is always available and I risk losing the data if something goes wrong. Instead, I can upload the file directly to Amazon S3. I configure the bucket to invoke a Lambda function when new files are uploaded. Once the new file is uploaded, the Lambda function is invoked with an event containing the bucket and the key name from S3. The Lambda function then grabs the file and uses Amazon recognition to inspect the video for sensitive data. This pattern also scales incredibly well. If I drop 500 video files into the S3 bucket at the same time, each file will invoke a Lambda function to process that individual video file. This allows for large-scale parallel processing without having to code for it. To take this pattern a step further, it is also possible to directly invoke an AWS step function from Amazon S3 as well. Using Amazon EventBridge as the go-between, S3 can drop an event on the bus and an EventBridge rule will match the event and invoke the step function with the data from the event. If these services are new or unknown to you, don't worry. There's a video for each of them in this series. If ever you find yourself uploading or downloading files through your application, I encourage you to rethink your pattern. Always redirect the client to interact directly with Amazon S3. It has a powerful API for managing objects. If you're concerned with security, and you should be, Amazon S3 offers signed URLs for uploading and downloading data. These signed URLs are set to expire after a short period of time and are great for short-term access to the objects. This has been a high-level overview of Amazon S3. I encourage you to dig into the individual features of S3 to make it work well for you. For more information about Amazon S3 and other videos in this Serverless 101 series, follow this QR code. Again, my name is Eric Johnson, and you can connect with me at EDJGeek on Twitter. Thank you.